you have recognized that working for somebody else and punching a time clock and trading your time, your hours for money is not freedom. Let's talk about it, starting now. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. Let's talk about the hashtag lazy girl job, the hashtag quiet quitter trends that we've been seeing lately, where a lot of people are kind of checking out of the workforce. They may even take on multiple jobs and be sitting at home, sort of just mailing it in and drawing multiple paychecks. So let me start the timer here. Let's talk about why that this is uh, I personally, when, uh, when I first saw this kind of trend come out there, it, it kind of made me mad because I, I was seeing these videos where people seem to be proud of um, wasting other people's time and money is what it kind of really boiled down to to me. And I know that kind of sounds harsh, but hear me out on this because I, I, I've kind of thought about it a little bit and I think that it's it's less uh, um, sort of a symptom of it's being people being lazy and more of a symptom of sort of the corporate world and uh, not fulfilling the promises um, that it states that it is. And maybe society talking about, you know, why you need to go and be uh, a minion in corporate America and either sit in the cube or sit in front of your Zoom, you know, Zoom meetings all day long, why that's not really stimulating for people. So I wanna talk about this because I think it's important and I think it's something that if you, if you don't know anything about what I do or what, what people who watch my channel do um, as in, independent insurance adjusters do, it's the reason why I, it find, I find it so weird, like this, the quiet quitter thing and the, the hashtag lazy girl job thing. The reason I find that weird is because I, I find that I'm most rewarded. I feel most fulfilled um, on a professional level anyway, um, when I'm able to be productive and to, and to be incentivized to be more productive, right? So there are, I would say that and this is kind of to get to the, to the really the bottom of this, that because people are like a, a kind of a big part of the workforce is working from home, right? Um, and a lot of people that come to, to, to take a look at insurance adjusting um, are looking for a work from home job, which is not bad necessarily, but I think it's it's not um, it's not the ideal way into this particular world and the, and the ideal way to get to earn six figures or, or you know, like low to mid six figures um, as, as doing claims work. I mean, you can absolutely, uh, but I don't think it's the right way, or at least at first, right? So my thought kind of flipped around a little bit on this to say, well, maybe corporate America is just not simulating enough, right? Maybe that, that um, you know, all the promises, uh, the, the social promises that we hear all the time that you, you know, you've got to have a career and you've got to, you know, find your passion and do all this kind of stuff. And, and oh, by the way, your passion is, is going to be in this, you know, corporate thing or being a graphic designer or, or being a this or being a that. You're, be, you're basically a cog in the machine, no matter what you're doing. And you're doing all the, the efforts that you do um, with work like that is for somebody else's benefit, right? They're paying you a wage, right? These are the hours, you know, you're gonna work this number of hours and we're gonna pay you per hour. And no matter what you do, you're just gonna make that money, right? Which makes it easy for people to check out and say, what's the absolute minimum that I can get away with doing um, and still keep this job and still keep that paycheck coming in? Because there isn't any incentive to be have a higher quality product. There isn't any incentive to do more work. There isn't any incentive to provide a better customer experience for whoever the end user is for whatever it is that you're doing, right? Because you're just drawing a wage, right? What's different about in, in, independent uh, property claims, um, primarily, and I think independent claims in general, but I'm as a property adjuster, um, that's my wheelhouse is what I know. The difference is, and the thing that really sparked me off when I first got into this back in the, the late 90s, was that I realized that, yeah, it's insurance, right? It is interesting because I get to travel and I get to see storm damage and tornadoes and fires and things like that so with all the stuff that I did. But what was, what was more interesting was that I found that if I was able to uh, be more productive and be better, have a better uh, end product, my claim product, whatever it is, you know, the claim I'm working on, and provide a better customer experience for the homeowner that I made more money. And I could do that, I could, I could crank that up 
in a week and see it get a raise on my next paycheck, right? So this this was the thing that, that really turned the corner for me and made me go all in on being a claims adjuster back in, way back in the day, 25, geez, has that been that long? Long time ago, right? So when I see this trend these days of people just like, just mailing it in, just doing an absolute minimum, um, it breaks my heart because you, I think people that, if you're, and if, you're, if this is you watching this, you were told something, you were, you were promised something, and the promise hasn't been fulfilled. I think that the, the answer to this, come check out insurance adjusting as, a, as an independent adjuster, um, at, at the minimum, um, or in, just in general, check out entrepreneurship. There's a lot of money to be made um, for people who uh, want to start their own business, right? And there's a lot of information. There's more information out there right now today about entrepreneurship and how to um, make great, make a great living without getting lucky, right? It's got not a single thing to do with luck or privilege or anything else. It's all about, and this is what this kind of whole thing boils down to. I'm gonna take these last seconds here. It, it requires the opposite of the quiet quitting thing. You can't just mail it in. In a, in a world and in a system that I like and that which claims is, and has always ha, always has been, in that world, we are rewarded for being not just more doing more work, but doing better and more work, right? So I, that's the people that make six figures doing this, $130,000 a year, $230,000 a year. Um, and they travel, you know, to, to go do claims, or they don't travel, they stay home and they do claims locally, and they're making $200,000 a year or more. Those people understand that they're not gonna make that much money just by showing up and just by having a pretty face or having a degree or having a whatever, um, or having some immutable characteristic, they're going to earn that money by earning it. And that requires hard work. Smart, hard work, right? They always say, this will be the last thing I say because I'm, I'm over on this one. They always say, well, you know, you gotta work smarter, uh, not harder. And I will tell you that I always worked smarter, smart as I can because it enabled me to work even harder. So all the effort that I wanted to put into the work was maximized by how smart I did the work, if that makes any sense. So bottom line, I think that um, the, the hashtag lazy girl job and the hashtag quiet quitter thing that we're seeing and people checking out of the workforce um, in spite of like minimum wages, like, I don't know, it's legally, like by law, it's not going up, but all the wages I see, I mean, you can get a job at Taco John's or at Panda Express for $22 an hour, right? Which used to be a $5 an hour job or a $7 an hour job. You're never gonna get the lifestyle that you want just checking out of the thing and just throwing your hands in the air and being like, well, this isn't, this doesn't make me feel great. Um, you need to have work that incentivizes you to be smart about it, to work hard and to help other people, which is what claims does. Believe it or not, you know, whatever, whatever you want to believe in 25 years, it's been my experience that the insurance industry is there to help. It's full of people, which people aren't perfect, but uh, we always do our best. And the best thing that you could do for the homeowner, for the property owner who's, who's suffered a loss, their house has burned down, they've just been blown away by a hurricane or tornado, is to get there as fast as possible, be as efficient as, as possible, write the best claim that you can as possible, and be as kind and as friendly as you can to that person, no matter what their attitude is, right? So you're incentivized in this industry to do that and you get paid more for being faster, but also not just faster, you get paid more for being faster, better, and more friendly. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad-free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.